When, uh, when my husband and I first met, then we talked quite a lot about dreams for the future and so on. And we both really wanted to, to create some kind of resort and uh, to have a life where we could include our family in, in what we do and uh, also be together as much as possible. So we, we went to Indonesia to, to find the perfect spot to build this resort. Greenland is, uh, is you know, they, there's a lot of places I think in the, that we say it's the last um, wild frontier in the world. Mm -hmm. It's definitely one of those places. Very mm -hmm. huge, huge country. Mm -hmm. A wild country, not very many people, uh, dominated by an enormous ice cap. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, dramatic mountains mm -hmm. and beautiful, you know, sea and icebergs floating. It's, it is absolutely unique in the world. But uh, then I became pregnant and uh, I decided to go back to Greenland to give birth. And uh, then the opportunity came uh, after some years where we had a client who wanted to do something extraordinary in the wilderness of Greenland. And uh, he wanted uh, a spa bath, luxury, private chefs. And uh, then we created this idea. And uh, to be honest, we didn't really expect that the customer would buy this because it would be rather expensive. Some of the things I love to do in here, and, I, and you know, this is all about showing when we have a, a guest coming here. I mean, I always find it weird to call them guests, but because very soon they are our friends. They come here and they visit our, our camp. I want to show them the best of everything. And, and some of the things I like to show them is the, the abundance of food here. Okay, so this is interesting. We do some of this type of um, of travel. I mean, we like to go to a certain, you know, some some places where we're outdoors, we're remote, we're doing hiking, we're doing outdoors things. Um, and this has been different, partly because Greenland, I think, is different, yeah. but a lot because of um, the fact that we chose to do it with with these people in this place. Um, it's yeah. felt. Uh, like, like really, um, I don't know, it's, it's we're comfortable, it's well situated, our beds feel amazing, the hot shower is incredible, but they haven't smoothed all the edges off, you know, so it still feels like you're outside and you're doing stuff. And then everybody's, um, I don't know, everybody feels kind of, I feel really close with everybody after just four days. When we picked this location, uh, we went out to, to scout for the perfect location, a lot of different places. And uh, we wanted to be a place where it was close by the ice, so we'd have icebergs outside the camp. And of course we needed water, so <clears throat> we would have water for, for the camp. And then because we are working with tents, we needed a flat spot. You know, that's uh, always a fine balance when you're in the wilderness. You want to experience everything and be safe. Mm -hmm. And they're perfect at that. I feel yeah. no, uh, no problems with that whatsoever, which, mm -hmm. is, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. For instance, in the back of this fjord, there's a small stream. And in there, in the right time of year, we have the uh, Arctic char moving up. So I go there with my kids and I go there with my friends, my guests, and, uh, and I teach them these basic, basic things, how easy it is actually to tickle a char and uh, select the right size. You know, it's 
which one do you really want? Is it a female? You can feel it that is really fat. So if I don't need the uh, the eggs near the sturgeon, uh, then then I'll just let it be so it can lay its eggs. Or choose this one. This male is good. I'm gonna eat that one, right? And you grab it and you pull it out of the water, you know. And and the satisfaction I see in people's eyes when they pull up that fish, you know, for the first time and they figure that it's it's so simple. Uh, that's just amazing. That's one of the things I really love to do in here is is going into the pantry. Uh, another activity that I just love um, is, uh, is we go uh, hunting in the water. Wear a wetsuit so we can withstand the six degrees water. It's actually not cold. And we go out there and because it, it, it's so clear, the water is so clear, we can see many, many meters. And you see all the fishes around. And again, you're very selective. You go hunting and you shoot your, your cod or you go down and you pick up sea urchins or other stuff. That's Definitely one of my favorite activities here in camp. Yeah, I was surprised by the scale of things. You know, I saw photographs, but I did not realize it would feel so yeah. big and that it would feel so wild. Um, and I'm also surprised, like, so it looks a bit barren from when you're back looking at a photo or back looking from far away and when you get close there's all this little bit of life that's yeah. that's happening so there's actually a lot of things to you know kind of see and this is a big surprise yeah. mm -hmm. and then we wanted to be close by uh, one of the villagers in, in our region for the cultural experience. So we had quite a lot of demands and it wasn't that easy to find the perfect spot. So we went out to a lot of different places and none of them had all the things that we wanted. And in the end, we're about to give up and we found another place where it wasn't that flat, but it had all the other elements. And then I talked to my mom. <clears throat> She's, uh, she grew up in, in this area. And then she said that uh, she used to go hunting with my granddad in this exact spot. And she said, it, it's quite flat and it seems to have all the elements that you want. So we're so happy when we found it because it had all the things that we're looking for. Actually, the first group we had, um, I had this, or we all had this experience that I want to share is that um, he was a um, self made, uh, really hard working um, man who had built a company from scratch to 4,000 employees. So, whenever his telephone will, will call, um, the family will physically pull away from him and give him space, like five or six meters. So he had his space to do his things. So in the morning, on the first day here in the camp, uh, he was up really early and he was standing looking at that fantastic view that we have. And he stood for maybe 10, 15 minutes, just looking out on the fjord. And he looked at me for a little while and he said, you know what, can you hold my phone? And he gave me his phone. And then they went on tour all day and when he returned, it was a different person. He was childish and he was uh, playful. And you know, he pinched his wife's butt walking up the hills here. And, and I remember vividly that at the evening dinner, his 70-year-old uh, son, he looked at his dad and he said, Dad, have you been smoking weed or something? And for the next four days, this family thrived, you know. Uh, they were interacting, they were playing on, in the evening and they were you know, they were doing stuff I don't think they've ever done, and you should have seen the kids, even though they were old teenagers. You know, that, that, was, just, that was just awesome. So, so this is actually what our camp is all about. This is about an opportunity to disconnect completely, and then just let things happen. And maybe you'll reconnect to something that you didn't even know you lost. <laughs>